So, my next guest on the show is Ronnie Irani. Many of you will know and seen and indeed enjoyed watching Ronnie have a successful, very successful career as a cricketer, both with Essex, Lancashire and with England. He played three test matches for England, but was probably more successful in the one-day arena, but was forced to retire from the sport through injury in 2007 and immediately threw himself into life after sport, which has culminated in the invention of Orthosol, a clinically tested and fully patented insole which he's very excited about in terms of not just bringing to the market, but becoming a household name in the years to come. This is what he had to say. So I caught up with Ronnie down at his property in Essex uh, and I asked him initially, what's he up to now? Basically, um, I invented an insole, um, Orthosol, with a German podiatrist. The podiatrist is a guy by Martin Troutman, who's seventh generation orthopaedic shoemaker who I used to see I was playing cricket and obviously due to my injuries uh, nine knee surgeries to my right three to my left hip surgery stress fracture at the back you name it job description Steve as they say you're a bit of a bionic man towards the end weren't you? well kind of yeah so I got to you know I'm really well with this podiatrist and I used to have my orthotics made by him and he treats some of the you know global stars whether it be Tiger Woods Usain Bolt diabetics people with major issues with their feet and anyone who's got sort of foot pain ankle pain knee pain back pain you know even migraines will understand what I'm talking about um, did he take any notice of that? he did a little bit he said what's cricket? you play with some sort of paddle do you? I said no it's not called a paddle it's a, a bat All right. but anyway I said to him how do we invent an insole on orthotic that everybody can afford? How do we invent one for like, you know, 20, 30 pounds, 40 pounds max? How do we do that? This was about 12 years ago. We set about inventing Orthosol. And um, we just come to the marketplace properly this last year, 18 months. Mm. And uh, we've got a global patent. And it's been a real long haul. But this last sort of 18 months to two years have been real hard work. I say come to the marketplace this last year or so with Blacks, outdoor retailers, Millets. Uh, all pharmacies as well throughout the country but our main push has been health and safety so that's what I've been doing Steve getting on the road sitting in front of uh, health and safety managers uh, head of procurement uh, HR you name it at big companies like Coca-Cola Greg the Bakers Warburton's Bread you name it if there's people that work in a particular place Hilton Foods which is not far from you just up the road at Huntingman you know people around going to see the health and safety guys and basically showing them off the soul anyone that stands on their feet for long periods of time um, will feel the benefits from what we have and you know why compare yourself with others when you know nobody out there can do a better job of being you than you and that's what I've always gone by and as a leader and that's what I've believed in cricket and I'm doing that in business at the moment okay so just saying something like the door's always open counts for nothing mm. uh, if you sort of come across any individual within your business within your company whether it be manufacturing level or, or sales level you know if you acknowledge them and you make eye contact with them uh, even if you don't know their name it doesn't matter as long as you make eye contact with them and are pleasant and polite you are approachable mm. and like I say you, don't, you know if you're employing a few thousand people you're not going to know each individual's name if you do you're a genius but one thing you can do and I can remember when I went on a leadership course in Ashridge I went down there and we, we did a big leadership course and then there's was, there was three or four top top directors and I was a cricket I was a captain of in cricket at the time at Essex and Keith Fletcher and Graham Gooch said Lord, go on and try this leadership course we've heard great things about it so I went down there and basically from that what I learned was you know just going from the leadership styles or what is required um, from everyone and bits and pieces was just unbelievable and being approachable and as you said the Kennedy sweep what stuck out to mind and people say what's the Kennedy sweep mm. basically when you stand up in a room you look around and you feel as though everyone in that room feels as though they've made eye contact with you mm. You won't know their name, and you probably haven't seen them, but if you have the style and the timing of the Kennedy sweep, they draw into you and you draw into them. Mm. And I think to be approachable, the door's always open is a cliche, fine, but you make an effort with people, you get such more of a return. And employee engagement is the best possible thing, if I believe, while leading from the front. Yeah. And Gooch, before I joined Essex, and people will say, oh, 
Yeah, well, he's a bit quiet, isn't he? Okay, off the field, in a pub, in a restaurant, absolutely. A gentleman. And quiet, as you'll know, Steve, quiet guy. But as a leader, one, first and foremost, he was the best player. So you have to be one of the best in your business. For me, if you're at the top. You don't get there by chance. If you do, you won't last long. There's no longevity in it. So you kind of earn your stripes up there. And Graham Gooch, he certainly earned his stripes up there by continued success. So he's proven. And then when he was there, down to earth, and he was so genuine that it just rubbed off on everybody else. And when you're in his dressing room, you'd do anything for him. You would sweat blood for that guy. How have you used that across all for soul? It's certainly approachability. Yeah, um... It's got to be in your character. It's got to be natural. I love meeting people. I do. We're the best one in the world. Mm. I, I like meeting people. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the toughest company to approach and, and get your message across can be the best challenge. Tell us about that first impression piece then, because you say you love meeting people. Yeah. I know that. I've seen yeah. you in action. I mean, there's a lot of the authors who talk about this subject. And I think they say you make up your mind on someone within 23 seconds. Are you a 23-second man? And um, How important is a first impression to you? Yeah, I mean, that's they call the secret, don't they? You know, it doesn't matter on the product, it's on the personality, it's on the character. You know, you buy a product from someone who's a good bloke, who you like, and who's got a personality. Will you buy a product from somebody who's not very nice, who's not good company, mm. and is a bit rude? Mm. Probably not, unless you have to, unless you have no choice and mm. you're tied up. But you'll go out of your way not to. Mm. But if somebody's a decent fella, you know, male or female, some brilliant, you know, girls out there we, in our business, especially in my company, I think when it comes to that approachability, the first 23 seconds, they get that. You've mm. got to be warm, you've got to be approachable. And I got told by one of the finest retailers that we've ever seen in this country. A guy um, who's based up in Bursa Edmonds, he's, he's in his 80s now, a guy called John Bird, who was head of retail at Tesco when they were flying. And um, he always said to me, look, we always talk, smile as you dial. A sad face <laughs> never sold a sausage. <laughs> so even if you think you've got, counsel. yeah, if you think you've got, somebody's got one over on you and you're struggling, just keep smiling through it. Just do your best you can. As long as you do the best you can, then crack on. But being successful is, if people want a piece of you, if people want to do work with you, they will. Just keep following it up, but then, if not, just keep moving on. Mm. Yeah, keep moving on. Don't go chasing shadows. Mm. Let the shadows chase you. You've got to look around at my team, what support I've got, you know, what backup they can give me, because I've got to lead from the front. I really believe in leading from the front. I can train uh, my individuals, the individuals around me and the, and the guys and girls that work for me, pass on information, pass on as much information as possible. But when it comes to success, I believe, from my perspective, I know every business can do this, open, we've got to be open about mm. everything. Good day long, you had a whiteboard in each corner of the dressing room and you had on there what you wanted to achieve. And you generally also had, you know, say I batted four or five for Essex and I bowled, so say the all-rounder on the side was Andrew Flintoff. So Ronnie Irani, Andrew Flintoff, right, Andrew runs Freddie gets this game. I want to match or better it. Any mm. wickets you get, I want to match or mm. better it. That's a good question. Um, basically, you have to be, in my opinion, the best in your business. So I had to make sure that I was one of the best players in my team. We had some top players alongside us. So whether it be Darren Goff, whether it be Graham Gooch, as I mentioned earlier, or whether it be Andy Flower, uh, Andy Bickle, we had, we had some top class players, but I had to make sure I was one of the best. Mm. And certainly, if people around me underachieved, you know, some of the youngsters coming through us to cut Ravi Bapara, if at times they weren't quite on top of their game, the onus, I always felt I had to absorb the pressure on me. The only compass that we're born with, and, and that's your gut feeling. Mm. Your gut feeling is everything in mm. business. It's the only compass in life. And I've seen successful sportsmen. Retail, this old guy I talked about, John mm. Bird, who was head of retail with Tesco, like said, Lord McLaurin, they mm. absolutely made the charge. They got Tesco to where it was. I mean, what we just look at how okay. successful they are, Stephen, the yeah. limos, but there's certain people like me who I've grown up with. There's a guy called Phil Mercer, Phil Adams Mercer. 
me and him together had three fruit and veg shops when I was 17. <laughs> and he went on to come up with a parcels company called FM Publishing. And cut a long story short, I had a little piece of that, I had about I think, 25% of it, and I gave it back to him because I was focusing on my cricket in Essex. Mm. And he was going for it again. And parcels to go, he invented from FM Publishing. I think he sold that for about 40 million. Yeah. But does it matter? It's only money. Did he send you 10 million? No, it's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Biggest buzz in sport was to achieve at the highest level for, for it sounds a bit corny, but the likes of my dad to show him and go on and play for England and have a successful career at Essex and Lancashire. Did all right at Lancashire as well, but Essex was my main county. To make my parents proud and my wife and, and family proud. I go out with a passion and enjoyment because this is mine, I, I own it, I invented it. And I want it to succeed like no other and I've got something, something different. I've got something different, I've got a patented product. There are other insoles out there and something is better than nothing. But there's nothing that I believe can compete with us. And what drives me, I love meeting people I love meeting people and, and chatting through what we've got. Tell them, check us out on Twitter. But the website, and one or two nice videos on there, check the videos out. You'll see some sort of yeah, ex-cricketer presenting on there. It's not bad. They say that um, TV puts pounds on you, but I have no comment about the video. <laughs> anyway, Ronnie, thanks ever so much. Great to see you again. Yeah. Good luck for the future. Great show. Thanks, Steve. Cheers. Star Radio's Business Hub. With Lloyds Bank. Commercial banking designed to help Britain prosper. What? 